Hello, today I get to introduce you to my friend. Well, I just love her name, Ren Robbins. And I know it's it sounds fake, but it's not. Um, <laughs> that her mom named her Ren. And then she married a man whose last name was Robbins. Um, but before we talk about your name, I want to introduce you to as a podcast coach and strategist, which sounds like a big deal. And it is. And I think you I think you live in Texas, right? Tennessee. Oh, pardon me. Tennessee. Anyway, um, well, anybody who talks like that, I just sort of write them off to it's any place in the South. Somewhere in the South, right? And <laughs> I, I am from Southern California, but I still don't talk like you, but I wish I did. Um, <laughs> Ren has a podcast called Don't Wing It Again, a play on words. Love it so much. And Ren has a lot to share with us today. Some good tips about podcast strategizing. Mm -hmm. And why is that a big deal? How many people are podcasting today? Do you know offhand? There are 2 million podcasts out there, but Ooh. there are only, I think, 230 of them that have only one episode. So if you think about it, it's really compared to blogs and YouTubes, it's not that much, you know, relatively speaking. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me understand. 2 million people started a podcast and 230 kept going or stopped? 230,000 only have one episode. 230,000. That's different. Yeah. Uh -huh. So there's really an opportunity for people. I'm just jumping in the strategy right here, girl. No, no, no. Uh, but it's it's an opportunity for us to share stories and share our message because of when you look at bloggers that are blogging and then people on YouTube and then podcasting, you know, out of the 2 million, you know, subtract the 230,000 and there's a great opportunity hmm. for people to listen to us. Um, and why do you think people quit after one episode? I mean, it's a big deal to start. I had to spend at least $500 just to get the equipment. Why would I quit after one? Or why would someone quit after one? Well, think? I think a lot of people don't have guidance and don't have really, they don't know what to do. They know, oh, I want to speak into a microphone, but they don't have a strategy. <laughs> they don't have anything. And usually it's after seven. There is something called pod fade that is after mm. seven. They just get, they just, you know, I don't get the results I want in seven and I don't promote it like I'm supposed to, or I don't, I promote it once a week and then that's it. And then it, they just fall off. So usually wow. it's after seven, but yeah, create one and done. Uh, I don't, I don't know what happened with that. <laughs> you know, seven is a heavenly number, but in this case, it's kind of not. Yeah, and, it's not. <laughs> uh, but I, it also makes me think of the seven year itch when people break up their marriages because they're tired. Uh -huh. They uh -huh. go, well, this is not what I expected, which is what you were just saying. This is not yeah. what I expected. It's not what I signed up for. And he is never going to change because, of course, he always needs to change. All <laughs> right. We're not talking about marriage right now. But uh, Ren, tell me a little bit about what is a podcast strategy coach and why did you become one? Uh, that's a great question. I love business strategy. I love mm. business strategy. It happened when I was making dinner. I think I would, it was at least probably four years ago and I was making dinner and I had my own podcast, the friends of a feather. And it was my ministry podcast because I knew God's stories needed to be shared of my friends, personal friends, friends I met online, friends that are, you know, acquaintances online. And I started that podcast. And then a few years into it, two years into it, I was stirring spaghetti and I was listening to another podcast and I felt God impress upon me, Ren, you're going to have business one day. It's going to have to do something with podcasting, but I, and I didn't know what it was. I was just like, what? Okay. I mean, I like listening to business podcasts. I like studying up on business strategies, um, but I had no idea what it was. And obviously most people would be like, oh, you would teach how to podcast because that's what you did. And I really, it took me years to really know that that's what I wanted to do. I was like, hey, anybody can do that. They can okay, Google it. Let's back it up. Two things. Tell us about your family because you are okay. like mother <gasps> and you're, you're building a house. But also, yes. what do you mean by business strategy? I mean, let's go back to the basics. People, I mean, I'm an English mm -hmm. major, so that never comes into my What's a business strategy? Obviously, okay. I need I need you. Obviously, I'll, I'm going to have to. <laughs> I'm going to pray about hiring you. In, like as soon as we get off this podcast, I'm kind of excited. But back to you. Okay, tell, us, tell me about your family and why you're building a house out in the country. Okay, my uh, I've been married to my husband for 19 years, Jim, and we went through infertility. That's part of my God story is wow. uh, infertility that we went through for three, about three and a half years. And God blessed us with um, our son. He's nine years old. His name's Easton. And uh, we tried to have 
uh, a, a, another biological child after that, and it just didn't happen. And um, we did not feel led or called to adoption. And so God just said, this is how your family's supposed to look. And we said, okay. And hmm. then I started a podcast and that was my second baby, honestly. Oh, <laughs> I so get it. Get that's it. it. That's it. And we were building uh, a house on some land. And so uh, we're excited about that. We hmm. have just started on that. So yeah, well, you, you don't know my story, but we've been remodeling for 13 years and we're still married. So that's part of my thing. And then also that's amazing. My, <laughs> amazing. My, I started podcasting because I don't have grandchildren. So like, why not? Right. That's a very spiritual yeah. reason. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm teasing sort of, uh, but yeah, when your babies are around, it's hard to do this, but I bet you talk and coach a lot of young women who still have their family around their ankles. We call them ankle biters or whatever. Yep. Um, and, and yet they still have a message that they feel now is the time to get out. So you help yeah. them run their business. How do you start helping them? Mm, that's a good question too, is how to start. Well, and the thing is, is just, they need to start in some direction. I really do one-on-one -on -one coaching where I take a, a, a woman that is knowing that there's a call, uh, to share her message with those that need her services. So I know that sounds, that sounds weird. Uh, uh, let's start over. <laughs> so it's usually let's for use Christian the word services. services. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a, that does not sound spiritual at all. Um, but it really is, it's for the businesswoman. It's for the woman that is in business that has, she's a, a solopreneur. She's working from home. She has kids. She might have grandkids and she wants to have that strategy put into her podcast. And so what I do is we talk about a little bit more about strategy is that why are you doing this? Why are you doing what you're doing? So people want to do a podcast. They want to share their message. They want to get more exposure for their business, but then they don't know how to do it or they just get out and get a microphone and start talking. Well, there's a whole a whole strategy behind it. You got to know where you're going. You got to know who you're reaching. You got you got to know who you're, what you're passionate about, and that's what you share. And then you set it up in a strategic way that people come into your business and then eventually will purchase uh, the service or product that you offer. But don't you find women already know what they're passionate about or they wouldn't even talk to you? I have women that know that, well, it, it when I speak to women that are, have their own business, they do, they know what they're passionate about, but Sometimes they need to talk through the specifics, like how do I create a podcast graphic? How do I create a content plan to share what I am passionate about? They might be passionate about something, but then they're like, oh no, this is what everybody else talks about on their show. Well, no, you got to talk about what God gave you to show, God gave you to share. And usually it, it, it equals out, but sometimes they just need that one-on-one -on -one attention to do that. Well, right. I taught high school English and- <laughs> many years ago. And it's the main thing I feel like a good English teacher teaches is how to write in an organized fashion. So mm -hmm. it kind of sounds like that's one thing. I'm sure you give lots of things, but one thing is just to help someone, a woman, a Christian woman, write down in an organized fashion somewhere, or at least have in their head, what is the first step? What is the next step? And what is the, where, where are you trying to end up and then repeat it at the end? And um, how have you seen success in you coaching women to do this? Well, this is really cool because, and we'll get to this in a minute about uh, the questions that you're going to ask about legacy. They were okay. excellent as well. But um, but yeah, you can see the ripple effect, the mm -hmm. ripple effect of kingdom impact. And that's when you see that and that you don't, you didn't realize that that was going to happen. And then you're like, you took little, little old me, a mom that podcasted in a closet, you know, like I, I was a teacher. I used to teach kindergarten. And then I, I stayed at home with my son when he was about uh, two years old. I wanted to be a stay at home mom. And then God gave me, gave me this passion. And then, but the, the kingdom impact that people can have when they share their message, and this could be sharing a message with your neighbor, this sure, could be sharing absolutely. your message, you know, this could be with your children, your discipling mm -hmm. your children. But when you do that for your business, you can make a kingdom impact in a basic way, like you're 
talking with clients or you're um, preparing something for clients, like you're a graphic designer and you, you do that. You can honor the Lord in that. You can have a huge kingdom impact in doing that and how you mm-hmm. treat people and how you talk with clients and how you, your presence is on social media. And when you, uh, when you interact with anybody. And so that's something that is, uh, was, uh, was surprising to me of the mm-hmm. kingdom impact that I could have. That reminds me of a, uh... Uh, something my uh, professor said in grad school to me, well, to the whole class, I've never forgotten it. He's probably forgotten me. I've forgotten everything I learned, except for this line, which is uh, spirituality isn't a slice of the pie. It's the whole pie. Mm. And so when you say uh, you could take the same message, a message, not the same message to a neighbor, and that gives the same in God's eyes, that is the Mm -hmm. same credit or approval, not that we work for his approval, but he's just so, he's so pleased because we're doing this small thing or big thing for him. It's the motive that's behind it. And then a question I had as you were talking uh, is this, if a woman listening today thinks she has, knows she has a message that's singular to her, because we all do, that God has been speaking to her about when when what has to happen where she knows i think it needs to be in the venue of podcasting versus bible study teaching speaking at retreats having a neighborhood bible study uh selling tupperware whatever how what is it singularly that is there one thing maybe or maybe there's several where you say hey i think this could be a podcast what mm-hmm. should she what should she be thinking right now to help her Besides, mm. call, besides calling you. Yeah. A, besides that, apartment. I have a podcast episode, a don't wing it podcast episode, and I'm not sure what number it is. I will get that to you. So you can put it in the show notes if you oh, want, yeah, I but do. it's five questions that you ask before you, to see if you're ready to start a podcast. That is a great podcast to put on. We'll link that for sure. Well, and I've, I can tell you a couple right now that, okay. that are off the top of my head. But the first one is, is if you have, I always suggest to do a brain dump is brain dump every content idea that you would, what you want to share, what your message is, what your mm-hmm. story is. Mm-hmm. I want you to brain dump it all. Then I want you to, um, that's really the first thing. And if you have more than 12 pieces of content, if you have more than 12 things mm-hmm. to write, then you should probably start a podcast. That's just one of them though. I say, if you have at least four or if you have four, five of them, you have to call me like immediately. If you have four, um, probably still kind of like think about it, look at, you know, what are your next steps, things. And then if you have, you know, one or two, um, you know, keep it in the back of your head. But if you don't have any, then you don't need to start a podcast. And listen, this was so cool because one of my social media you know, followers verse and friend, you know, you get to know everybody on social media. And she said, Ren, your episode, that episode, the five, she said, it was so clarifying to me because I know I'm not supposed to start a podcast. And I was mm-hmm. like, praise the Lord. Yeah. That is clarity. And that's what I, I like. I'm going to get, I'm going to get, um, you know, Goose, goosebumps. Yeah. What am I trying to say? Yeah. Goosebumps. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> and it was just so great to hear that, that it, it's very clarifying. So yeah, that's what I would say is number one, if you can brain dump and you have more than 12 ideas. Um, yeah. But what if the 12 it? ideas could be in a different venue? I'm thinking specifically, why would they 12 ideas? I get it. I mean, I recorded six podcasts before I even launched because I was so yeah. scared. I wouldn't have anything to say, but my friends would laugh. I always have something to say, but, um, <laughs> but because it was a new tech thing for me yeah. too. Oh, and sure. I didn't, I didn't want to make a fool of God or myself. Yeah. And so yeah, six actually recorded, but for, for someone to actually say these 12 things need to be in the venue is venue, the wrong word. And I guess in the um, queue, in the queue. No, what I meant no. was if oh. someone has 12 parts of 12 great parts of content. Yes. Why should they podcast? Why couldn't they use the 12 parts doing another type of ministry? Well, and they totally could. Okay. But uh, how do they know it's podcasting? That's my question. Well, you got to listen to the episode and get the rest of the four questions. Okay. <laughs> no, that's I'm... all you, no, no. That's all you need to say. Okay. Because okay. I, think but... there, I think there is something very unique about podcasting. I yes. was just on a little boat, as I told you about, in the Galapagos Islands. And everybody went around the room to explain what they did. So all I said was, well, I'm Sue Donaldson and I'm a faith podcaster. Well, no one else on that ship was a podcaster, much less a faith one. 
So uh-huh. that the Lord used that just to be able to, yeah. you know, what does that mean? And why did you do it? And I go, well, then you get to talk about Jesus, you know, uh-huh. that's right. But, but um, anyway, coming back to you, what has been the most, you already mentioned a great example, but what has been the most rewarding thing for you as a podcast strategist? Mm. I was going to tell you the story about um, when I switched from, I had friends of a feather podcast for six years and it was mm-hmm. my faith, um, faith-based podcast of how uh, women can share their God stories, the stories that they have walked through that to know God is faithful. God is there with you, no matter what your circumstances. And so I did that for six years and in the process of um, doing that and also doing don't wing it and coaching for women in business, for their podcast, um, there was a lot, there was a lot to take on. And I was seeing that I didn't have a lot of margin in my mm-hmm. days, even when my son was at school, mm-hmm. it was still, there was not a lot of margin and I was torn two different directions. And so I just started praying and a year, a year before I paused the friends of a feather, um, I felt it, I felt it down deep and, wow. and I knew it was something I needed to do, but it took me a year a year to do that, to lay it down. Mm. And, um, in April I, and I mean, people were probably like, what? And I was like, I'm pausing and it's because I'm going and doing this. And so you could look at it. And I had an internal struggle, honestly, of, of where I was going to be like, okay, I was doing this ministry podcast and I was, this was my ministry. And this was, uh, I was sharing the good news of Jesus. I was sharing these God stories, these women's God stories. They were, I was giving them a, a voice, you know, I was giving them a megaphone to use their story and to, to get it to all these people. And then the enemy really attacked me when I made that transition is that you can't be kingdom minded now. That's your, your, how are you doing that? You're helping people start their own podcast. And it was such a lie from the enemy that I really struggled with that. And I, and that's where that kingdom impact and that ripple effect that I mentioned earlier is just you, only you can, God has given us with so many gifts and talents and he does it so personally and so individually that he does that so that when others see you using those gifts and talents that they glorify him. Like that's our purpose is to glorify God, make Mm -hmm. him known to others. Well, I can make him known when I'm teaching somebody how to podcast, how to share their message. And it's that ripple effect. And so what I did was really when that the enemy is really attacking me in that I, um, I, I did something. I reached out to all of my uh, coaching clients that I had had, and so far, and I said, I need you to tell me your number of downloads that you've had. And so they all up, up to, you know, from when we started working together to, to now, and I didn't do it for anything selfish at all. I added all those up and the number that I can't got to was amazing. And it was over a hundred thousand downloads. Mm. And that was not about the numbers. I'm not about the numbers. No, I know. I'm about kingdom impact and the mm-hmm. fact that I, I'm getting chill bumps again, the fact that I could train somebody and show them how to set up their podcast, to start their podcast, to share their story mm. that could have that kingdom impact, that could have that ripple effect for others. They're reaching many more than I could ever reach oh, with absolutely. my podcast. Yeah. And it's, so that's it's when, like having children. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's, it, it is. And so it, that, that really cleared mm-hmm. it for me. And I was like, nope, I can go right there and say, look at this kingdom impact that I'm having because I'm teaching them. They're the ones that are having impact, but it's just the ripple effect. Um, and to me, that sounds like your legacy. Did you want to say anything more about what is the legacy that well, you that's, um, are leaving to those who know and love you? Yeah, absolutely. And that, that is the, that they, that they can make no matter how, small or how insignificant you think your gifts or your talents are, you can make a kingdom impact by using those gifts and talents, those God given gifts and talents for the glory of God. And he's given those to you. And so we need, I'm getting even more fired up even lately uh, about just using them to the fullest, like Mm -hmm. all the way in, we're going to go all the way in with every gift and talent that we've, that God's given us. Like, I want to go all in. I want to just be like a sponge, like squeezed out when I, when I get to heaven one day and and say that you used every single one of your gifts and talents 
for the glory of God to the fullest. And that's, mm. that's my legacy that I mm. want to leave. I just, that makes, that makes me cry. Um, so, um, how are you living it right now? I think you're living it right now by coaching. Is that right? Yeah, I, I'm living it right now, now by coaching and have there been obstacles? Yes, absolutely. But the thing is, is that, and I, I feel like I'm impressed to say this to, to your listeners is that it's not just me that can make a kingdom impact with the gifts and talents he's given me. It's every single believer in Jesus that God has given you the gifts and talents and whatever those are, use those to the fullest. Like that's, that is my challenge to you is, is to do that. And that I, it's not just me, it's every one of us that can oh, do totally. that and have yeah. that kingdom impact. And, and just the word fullest has come to me recently of just, I want to, I want to do it all the way out to the fullest. Um, and then, and so I'll tell you this, that during friends of a feather, when I would have guests come on the show and some of them were, you know, New York Times bestselling authors. And I was just here, a hot mess, Ren, podcasting in her closet. Like, you know, like make sure I push your forward, Ren, because, you know, this could be mm -hmm. lost forever, you know, just mm -hmm. all the things. Um, little in, insignificant, Ren. And then I was having them on, and most all of them would say, Ren, you make me feel so comfortable. I feel mm -hmm. so comfortable. You're so easy to talk to. And it's not about me. That's truly from God. Like, mm -hmm. that is a gift. And I feel like that's one of, the best gift God has given me is mm -hmm. the fact is thinking that it's so little, but it really isn't. It's yeah. making people feel comfortable. And that is so cool that God can give us each, each one of us different gifts. Each and, one I think, of us. and I think that particular gift that you just mentioned is how you embody God's welcoming heart, because that's my last Absolutely. question. How does your life embody God's welcoming heart? Well, you welcome the world to come and get coached by you. Yes. But you as a person, when you interview someone or when you talk to someone, uh, probably whenever you talk to them, um, you make them feel comfortable with who they are and then they can be, uh, I think when someone feels more vulnerable, then they'll share who, where their needs are. And that's where an mm -hmm. opening is for God, for them to know that God really loves them and has mm -hmm. also gifted them. We, I'm sure we both talked to many women who feel inadequate. And yeah. I feel like punching them on occasion, which is not a spiritual uh, <laughs> way to go about <laughs> exhorting somebody, but I kind of want to shake them and say, you know what, you're just as gifted. You're just gifted mm -hmm. in a different way. And yeah. we are so fearful because of social media. Often we just compare ourselves with other others. Yeah. And I think that can make us um, slow up and make us feel afraid to take the next step. A big step, a podcasting is a big step. And I can't believe I'm still doing it at mm -hmm. 70, but oh, well. Mm -hmm. The Lord uh, provides. And Ren, um, what last statement or a bit of wisdom do you want to leave our listeners with today? Well, I want to say is step into those gifts that mm. God has given you. Step into them, whatever it looks like. If it looks like discipling your, your kids through music and to sing and do morning basket with them and homeschool them, then do that. If it means to that you have your business and you want to have kingdom impact with your business and start a podcast. If you want to share your God-given story, God-given message, and then your story of how God's been faithful you could also start a podcast, but whatever mm -hmm. you do, I want you to just pray, ask the Lord to show you what your gifts, what are you excellent? What has he gifted you at doing very, very, very well and use it to the fullest. That's what I would say. But I also want to say something to you, Sue, your podcast is awesome. If anyone should be <laughs> podcasting, it is you, my friend. Wow. Like, I, 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 didn't, I didn't pay love service. it. Thank you. I know I love, I love listening and I love seeing you and your zest for life, but also the heart that you have for others to feel welcome and mm. to be able to sit at his table at our table. And so I love, I love that about you. So I want to say, keep doing what you're doing. You're doing amazing, amazing work. Mm. Thank you. Wow. This is the first time anybody has said that on mm. camera. They have said it <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> No, I don't care. it's got to yeah. be on camera, girl, yeah. right? And and it's kind of Make funny because my own family doesn't listen, but that's okay. <laughs> and listen, that was the first thing I had to get over is that <laughs> family. And then I'm like, did y'all listen to my podcast? No, no, no. no. Okay. That's okay. My, I love you anyway. You're not my ideal client. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> my sister wrote me today. I heard that solo one you did. It was good. I go, well, thank you. I'd never heard that yeah. from one of my sisters before. Okay. Oh. We need to close up. You have been a blessing. Where can people find you if they um, want to take the next step in podcasting? 
Yeah. You can find me on Instagram at Ren Robbins Coach or on Facebook at Ren Robbins Podcast Coaching. And spell your name, Ren? It's W-R-E-N-R-O-B-B-I-N-S. And can they get a free coaching call to begin with? Yes, you can get a discovery call if you want to even see if you are wanting to start a podcast. Okay, Okay, that's great. And we will put in the show notes all this information. So don't worry if you didn't write it down. Thank you so much. You are our love and you have a great day. Thank you. You too.